Hello, my name is Rory. I'm a macro wildlife photographer from the United Kingdom, and I'm here in the office creating this video today because in association with Laowa, I'm going to attempt to show you the entire process of creating a focus bracket through to creating a focus stack for macro. So what is focus stacking? What is focus bracketing? And how can it assist you with your macro photography? Well, I use Lamba lenses. Uh, this is the 90 millimeter 2.8 here. And the reason that I'm so attracted to these lenses is at the two to one magnification ratio that you get out of the box, it means that you can get a lot closer to some of those subjects um, than many of their competitors. The upshot of this extra magnification though, is that the closer you get to a subject, the more narrower the depth of field. That is the amount of the subject that is in focus. You have a look at this photo here, although I'm very pleased with the photo, you can see that due to the narrow depth of field, some of the important parts of the image are not in focus. Now in certain cases, this may give you quite a pleasing effect, but then there may be other times when you wish you could just get more of that subject in focus and get some more detail in the image as well, without having to go up through the F numbers, narrowing the aperture and running the risk of having to deal with a lot less light and diffraction creeping in as well. This is where focus stacking comes in. Focus stacking is effectively taking multiple exposures of the same image at different focal lengths and then using software then to blend all those images together in order to give the impression of a much deeper depth of field, giving you a lot more detail and a lot more in focus. The focus bracketing is the process of getting those images. So that's what we're gonna start off talking about first. And there's a few things that I use that can really help make life easier when trying to create a focus bracket. The first one of those would be a flash and diffuser setup. Many of the Lauer macro lenses are fully manual. So you're not gonna be able to rely on any in-camera trickery like uh, auto bracketing or any of that kind of software to, in order to assist you create your focus brackets. However, with a flash attached, the world of handheld focus stacking becomes available to you as the flash effectively freezes the image meaning shifts in movement between frame and frame are not so reliant on having a rail or tripod to assist you. And when you use a flash, you need good diffusion. The downside of using flash is that it can create very harsh reflections on shiny insect bodies, crushing fine detail. A good diffuser such as the Cygnus Tech can soften the light to such a degree it becomes almost indiscernible to natural daylight. Now in order to help us model the process of focus bracketing today, I've got to call in my assistant Lulu who's my giant Asian praying mantis. Now Lulu, of course, is a pet that was raised in captivity. She is quite used to being handled. She's certainly quite used to me. So I'm not going to advocate for you to be bringing in wild subjects from outside and shooting them indoors. As for those many that know my photography, I do pretty much all of my macro photography outdoors with wild subjects in situ wherever possible. Um, however, for the use of this video, she's going to partake in having few photos taken of her. So what I'm doing here is simply moving the camera slowly closer to the subject with high speed burst depressed, using focus peaking to find the closest part of the subject and then moving in a straight path to cover the parts of the insect that I want to appear in focus as if moving on an imaginary rail. You could make a whole separate video on techniques for doing this. In fact, I did, which you can also check out on Venus Lauer's media channels. So please take a look at that too for a more detailed description of this process. So, now you have your successful focus bracket. The next thing to do, of course, is to turn it into a focus stack. Now, there are a number of different products on the market to assist you with doing this. In fact, you can even do it with Adobe Photoshop, which I'm going to be showing you in a minute. Uh, but there's also some more 
focus stacking focused products out there as well, like Helicon Focus, for example, which is the one I tend to use, and which we're going to be looking at a little bit as well today, just to show you the benefits of that over and above doing it through Photoshop. And also I'm going to try and give you a few little tips on touching up and speeding up your workflow. Let's load it up. Now one of the first things I like to do when I'm preparing my focus bracket is just to load the images up into the gallery and just have a, have a flick through uh, just to see how much movement there might be between the frames and just to see the quality of the bracket uh, and just to see if there's any frames that I might need to delete from the front or the back. Um, here you can see as I click between these two images there's a slight bit of movement there between the uh, the antenna between frames so luckily it's at the very near beginning of the bracket so I can just actually just drop that one off and uh, start the, uh, the, the focus stacking process from just a couple of frames in. So that's quite a good result. The next thing I like to do before getting into the actual nitty gritty of the focus stacking process is just to load all of the images from the bracket that I wish to use uh, into Lightroom. Now what you may find even if you've got a pretty consistent and hardworking flash that there still might be a few differences uh, between the actual images uh, in terms of the light quality uh, and also um, one thing to bear in mind is that uh, the focus stacking, the digital negatives that it produces can be quite harsh on uh, dark areas and blacks and stuff and uh, sometimes they can get crushed and some of the details can be very difficult to retain. So what I'll do is I'll just select one image that's got a decent amount in focus on its own and I'll just make some adjustments to the light balance, you know, lift shadows uh, that I'm doing here uh, and just make it a little bit more visually pleasing. Uh, generally speaking, and just do some of the work that works best with the original RAW uh, rather than trying to work on the digital negative produced by the stack later on. So once I'm happy with the adjustments that I've made to that single image, uh, what I'm then going to do is copy the settings from that image, select my entire bracket across the bottom, and then I'm simply just going to paste to the entire selection. Um, that way, in one fell swoop, I should get a nice even finish across the entire bracket. All that's left to do now in this prep phase is just to save your images. Uh, I normally save my images in TIFF format just to reduce any chances of any compression. And then we'll be ready to load up Photoshop. Now, Photoshop's uh, pretty good uh, from a beginner's perspective when it comes to focus stacking because it can be quite forgiving when it comes to movement in the uh, between each frame of the bracket. Uh, so uh, it's a pretty good place to start when you're first trying out your first one. Uh, so once we get into Photoshop, you want to go up to the top left and click on File. This will bring up a whole new pane of options down the left hand side and you want to scroll down to where it says scripts and then load files into stack. This will then bring up another new pane where you want to click browse and then you want to select all of the images inside your bracket. Next, you want to make sure that you tick the box that says attempt to automatically align sources. Click OK. And now Photoshop will attempt to align all of the images best it can with any movement between each of the exposures in each frame of the bracket. Uh, now this unfortunately is where Photoshop starts to show its hand a little bit as a jack of all trades uh, when it comes to uh, focus stacking. It's not a dedicated focus stacking piece of software. So this process can actually be quite lengthy, even if you've got quite a beefy PC. Uh, so for the sake of this video, I'm going to skip to the end of this part of the process. So once the alignment process is complete, you should now see all of the exposures in your bracket listed over here as layers on the right hand side. So you want to select all of these by left clicking the top one, scroll all the way to the bottom of the list and then hold shift and left click the bottom to select the entire bracket. Now this time you want to scroll to the top and click on edit. This again will bring up another new pane of a load of new options and you want to scroll down to find auto blend layers. 
Click on that, you'll get another new pane and you want to make sure that stack images, not parama, is selected. And then you've got a couple of extra options at the, the bottom. Uh, you've got uh, seamless tones and colors, which you're going to want because it's going to try and make sure that there's uh, as, as little difference as possible between uh, the exposures when they're stacked together. And also there's one there for uh, some content aware filling on the outside as well of the frames if there's any misalignment. Uh, click that one. Uh, you can see those white areas uh, around the image there. That'll automatically fill those in for you. Uh, but for this case, I'm going to crop quite tightly. Uh, so I'm going to move on without doing that. Now, yet again, this part of the process can be quite a lengthy one. Uh, so uh, for the sake of uh, a little bit of artistic license and viewer enjoyment, uh, I'm going to speed this part of the process up a little bit. But just bear in mind, even with a powerful PC, uh, the, the entire length of this process can take sort of 10 minutes, perhaps. You'll see in a moment when we take a look at stacking in Helicon, uh, how much of a difference it can make actually to have a dedicated stacking software when it comes to the time taken. So I've skipped forward a little bit here and I would say that it looks as though the stack is just about to be finished. And there we go. Ah, there's our finished focus stack. Now, first glance, it looks like it's come out pretty well. Um, although if we have a little look more closely, you can see it is a little bit imperfect. Uh, I can see sort of around the back of where the eye meets the sort of neck area. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, transparency there. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world with a little bit of creative cloning. Um, we might be able to get rid of that quite easily. Uh, and then also sort of around the um, upper neck area where the sort of head meets the neck, there's some missing detail there. It looks pretty soft. Uh, again, you could maybe get a bit of cloning in there to patch across some details. Uh, but what you could also do is you could also uh, find uh, the, ex the exposure with the detail that you need and load it in as a layer uh, and maybe do some further blending uh, later on. Uh, but this can be quite a time consuming process in comparison, again, to a more dedicated uh, software. Uh, but overall, not a, not a terrible result. So uh, moving on to Helicon now. Now Helicon, as I say, is a, is a far more uh, dedicated uh, piece of software for focus stacking. So for that end is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, so to start your stack with this, you just need to add images top left. Uh, again, select all of the images in your bracket and click OK. And again, they will all appear in a list over here on the right hand side of the frame. Uh, so <clears throat> with this, you, it's a little bit different. Um, it, you've got a couple of options here. In fact, you've got three options that are there, which uh, which really just produce the stack in slightly different ways. Now I tend to stick with the B or C method. With the C method being the one I would say, which gives the best overall result in terms of um, the least amount of artifacts uh, between um, the individual frames. Uh, whereas the B method, I would say, gives you more fine detail uh, at the expense of having a little bit more artifacts conversely to the C. So probably a good idea to run one with both to see which one is gives you the best result. However, for the sake of this video, we're just going to carry out one in C. Now you can see one of the nice things about Helicon is it gives you this preview pane as it's committing the stack. Uh, and also one thing you'll notice is how much quicker it is than Photoshop. You can see that was uh, just a, a few seconds to create that there. I mean, I've got quite a well spec PC. So that may have helped it a little bit, but uh, either way, whatever you're using, you're going to see a difference uh, between the two. Um, so straight away, you can see that I've got a better result here with Helicon. That uh, transparency is, is virtually gone. There's a little bit more detail there along the sort of seam between the head and the neck as well, which there was a bit of a problem there with Photoshop. Um, so already straight off the bat, it's a better result. Uh, however, it's not perfect. You can see there's some ghosting here. Uh, around the uh, the mandibles at the front uh, and I can see a little bit of ghosting around the head. Um, also uh, what we've got is there's still 
a little bit of transparency there as well. I can see um, just on the antenna uh, where the sort of line of the head is shown through the antenna there. So what I'm going to do now is just show you uh, some really quick and easy ways uh, to get this sorted out. So if you just click the retouching uh, switch at the top, uh, and then you just need to scroll through on the left hand side uh, you just need to select the images uh, or image that you want to use to repair to retouch in the one that's got the detail that you need to retouch in your final stack on the right hand side so here i can see there's a nice sharp mandible edge there uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to effectively just <clears throat> get rid of that ghosting uh, by what you'll see is that when I select the brush tool, what it will effectively do is it will clone uh, what's on the left hand side onto the right hand side. You can see the brush actually appears in both panes. Uh, so you literally just paint in or erase that ghosting area. I'm just gonna do it on that, uh, on that edge there rather than doing it all the way around the head just to show you the effect. Uh, and then you can just smooth it in as well. If you notice there's any difference in brightness between the exposures, there's a brightness control there as well. Uh, but you can see how quick and easy it is, where it is to do this. I mean, the ghosting around the mandible there is now um, virtually gone entirely. Um, same again, what we're going to do with the uh, transparency on the antenna. Uh, I'm just going to scroll through, uh, see if we can find an image on the left hand pane, uh, which has got the nice sharp details on the antenna that we need. So we're just going to keep clicking through somewhere around here somewhere. Uh, Okay, yeah, one more maybe. Okay, uh, so let's zoom right in. You can see what I'm doing here effectively. So again, see the brush on the left hand side, just follow in the areas of detail that you want to pull across onto the right hand side and you can see how easy it is. I'm literally just erasing that transparency altogether just by cloning the details across uh, from the left hand side. And then again, uh, we've got some probably even worse transparency actually showing on that antenna on this side. So again, probably just only a few more clicks away. Hopefully I won't keep you waiting too long while I find it. There we go. So again, just going to paint in that missing detail into that antenna whole process literally just it takes seconds uh, looks like there's a little bit of missing detail uh, lower down as well on the antenna I've just noticed so I'm just going to brush that across and just literally just pull the detail across from that left hand side of this one and then already that's that's looking pretty good I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this now uh, just to uh, get rid of some more of that ghosting and uh, just do some final touches on it uh, get it cropped and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a look at the uh, the final image. So there you have it. That was focus bracketing and focus stacking. I hope you found the content in today's video useful. I just want to add at this point that this isn't a right way or wrong way video. This is just things that have worked for me and the things that I use in my workflow. Is there anything that you feel that I've missed or something that you do that you think would be useful to the conversation? Then please put it in the comments below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you out in the field.